now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to our final segment this Sunday on Inside West Virginia Politics as we talk about the business and labor communities here in the mountain state of West Virginia. We hope you're all having a great Labor Day weekend. With me right now is Elaine Harris. Uh, she's a staff representative with the Communications Workers of America. Is it Chapter 115 or no, 213, Local 213, District right? 213. District, I'm trying to remember all okay. the numbers. Great to have you on the program again. Um, one of the things we want to talk about this week is the issue of pay equity. There was a recent study from WalletHub.com that said West Virginia was sixth in the nation in terms of equity and pay and benefits between men and women. I, that kind of surprised me. I think it surprised you as well. Uh, on the other hand, uh, American Association of University Women came out with a study that kind of contradicted that. Where are we in terms of pay equity? Well, uh, nationally here in the United States, uh, it's 80 cents. Uh, women earn 80 cents uh, to every dollar uh, to our male uh, counterparts. And uh, for um, in West Virginia, it's 74 cents. So we're, we're below um, and uh, we've got work to do. Yeah, so even though if, we, if it's true that we are sixth of the nation in terms of being sixth best, there, there's still a long way to go, right? Yeah, I, lo I looked at both uh, of those um, uh, pieces uh, and uh, AAUW, I think they nail it, uh, you know, in terms of, of information. Uh, like you said, the uh, Wallet Hub is a little uh, confusing, but um, I think at the end of the day, you know, it, it talks about pay and, and, and the equity. So uh, are you are you folks backing legislation before Congress that would close the pay gap? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, Paycheck uh, Fairness Act, uh, which was known at one point the Lilly Ledbetter uh, Act, um, that would bring things into perspective. Also, uh, there's two other bills that, um, you know, now uh, people in many instances are forbidden to talk about what they're paid uh, when there's not a collective bargaining agreement, which is in a contract, you know, with the unions that you know what your, uh, your uh, male counterparts are making because you make the same, you're under that contract for each uh, respective job title. This would allow you to be able to talk about it. And um, so again, the uh, Paycheck Fairness Act, we fully support. Now you're in a union, and that's a di bit different than the private sector. I mean, when you hire, you represent corrections officers in the state of West Virginia, or call center workers for Frontier, and, uh, and so forth. But if a man and woman start at the same starting pay, they have equal pay, and if they're there ten years, they should ostensibly be being paid the same, right? Yeah, through collective bargaining agreements in both the private and public sector, uh, there are uh, pay scales, and uh, whether male or female, those those scales are equal because we negotiate. Uh, the pay and the benefits. I want to talk about another subject here because this is near and dear to many of our viewers' hearts. We're talking about you call for uh, you know customer service at whether it's uh, f you know your Frontier cable subscriber or any other of the, the folks you represent. Um, you guys are working on some legislation that will deal with call centers because a lot more of these these days get offshored to other countries. A lot of times there's a real language difficulty between me, the consumer, calling customer service trying to get help. What are you folks working on legislation? Yeah. We have two uh, national pieces of legislation. One uh, that I'm proud to say there's bipartisan support. Uh, Congressman McKinley from West Virginia uh, uh, joining up with a Congressman Mark uh, Pocan uh, to, you know, reach uh, across party lines uh, to sponsor this legislation. And what that would do, uh, if it were passed, it would allow you to know when you reach uh, someone uh, in, a, in another country, to know where they're located. You also who would have the right to transfer that call back to someone here in the United States. And also, it would create a bad actor list if uh, there are companies that are offshoring, taking the work out of our country, uh, then they would be on that list and they would not be eligible for any types of grants uh, or assistance that they would receive uh, currently. And then they would have a chance to redeem themselves by uh, bringing jobs back. So it's twofold. Uh, the legislation, it's good for jobs and it's good for consumers. Now the second piece of legislation, uh, the tax reform that was passed, um, you know, sometime earlier, um, it gave uh, tax breaks to companies, corporations. And um, what has happened, uh, there was uh, uh, 
that was given uh, testimony in, in Washington before the Congress that they would reinvest in the workers with those tax breaks. But what we're seeing happen is more offshoring, uh, centers closing, and uh, we just, you know, that's not good. We represent AT&T workers, uh, and we also represent a, a frontier with call centers. All right, we're so, going to follow this issue because Congress goes back to Washington September 9th. Yes. We want to thank Elaine Harris from the Communications Workers of America uh, District 213 chapter here in West Virginia. Good to see you again, and we'll have you back as this uh, legislation progresses, all right? Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Inside West Virginia Politics. Don't forget, download us from your favorite podcast vendor. We'll see you back here next week.